The Back to the Future 2 Time Machine Snap Together Kit by Polar Lights. Coming up next, Marty. Great Scott, have we got a great review for you today. Today we're going to be looking at the Polar Lights Back to the Future Mark II Time Machine. This is the one that flies with the Mr. Fusion, Marty. It's going to be a great review. All right, so without further ado, let's pop the lid on this thing and see what's in the box. Now we set our chronometers all the way back to 2014 as we check out the Back to the Future 2 Time Machine. This is the Mark II unit. It's a Polar Lights kit snapped together. Great Scott Marty! It's insane! <laughs> Alright, time to turn off Dr. Emmett Brown voice. But anyway, as you can see, here's our great time machine from Back to the Future Part 2. This time machine variant actually appeared at the end of Back to the Future. That was the Mr. Fusion on the top. And then it played a pretty predominant role in Back to the Future 2, of course. Jumping into the future and back to the past and back to 1984 and all kinds of things. Or sorry, 1985. As you can see, the box is pretty much showing the same thing. However, in this time in round two's history, 2014, we do get the amazing Back to the Future model as it appears here with the fold down flying machine wheels. And of course, you can tell this is a kit from the future because here we have, of course, a code for your phone, a QR code. This is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up, needs glue, paint, and it's cool, Marty. Anyway, there's a few of these in the series. Here they show the uh, time machine for Back to the Future. And I do believe there is a Back to the Future 3. Now, a uh, model kit. <laughs> we know there's a movie. Now this model kit, of course, is sealed. I got it from a friend of mine, just for a review. And I'm going to convert this into a slot car for a friend of mine in Italy. But before I do that, I wanted to review this thing as it is, as so that you guys could check it all out. Now, it's still shrink-wrapped. So I'm going to have to cut this thing open so we can actually take a look at what's in the box. Marty McFly! So now I've got my hobby knife right here, and we'll just pop the cap on it. This is the sharpest knife I own. It's actually one of those testers ones comes in the painting kits is really cheap model knife, but it's like highly tempered steel. So I've never had to sharpen this thing and it's been like factory fresh and I've had this for years. Okay, anyway. Let's just see here. There we go. <laughs> Alright. There. I don't often get to rip shrink wrap off these kits, so this is a special treat for me and for you and for Marty. Okay, now how do you open these? All right, ah, Polar Lights is a good fitting box. Box lid. Okay, so I'm peering into the future and I see chrome plated parts. Are in your future. In the future. <laughs> oh wow, it's molded in stainless. It actually feels like stainless. So that's good. I don't have to paint. <laughs> and that really speeds up my model build time. There's the clear windows. And of course, rubber tires. Now I won't be using these for the slot car. However, there's all our interior and everything in these nice bags. And what's down here? More bits in bags. Okay, we're gonna have to cut these open and take a look. Of course. And then here we have our instruction sheet. And then what's this? Ooh. Neat little catalogs from round two from 2014. So that's exactly what you're gonna, gonna find in this model kit. So I'll just clear all this out of the way as usual. And then we will get Back to the review! Welcome back! Okay, here we have our Back to the Future 2 instruction sheet. And I discovered something in here. We have decals in hiding, very tiny ones. This, of course, is your out-of-time license plate. And then the one from the future! And this... Oh, 
So you get a sticker version and a decal version. So that's pretty cool. All right. That's for another time. <laughs> okay. There we go. Important! Read this first. Do not misuse the flux capacitor. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, kit pin can be assembled by snapping together the parts as indicated by the instructions. However, if you wish to glue the pieces in a conventional manner and detail the kit with paints, that is also an easy task. Okay, and then it goes on. It tells you all the paint callouts and everything. So I'm going to do this in the silent mode panel view, which means I'm not going to do this. Which, of course, oh, maybe I will. Why not? I thought this was a little bit different, but that's okay. All right, so zooming into our panels here. So we start off with our DeLorean dashboard, which has, of course, our steering wheel and column, which pops right into there. Then we have our clock going up here, because remember, this was a... This is the time in 1985, Marty! <laughs> okay. And then we have our seats going into the interior with these two little things pop in. I'm sure uh, if you guys know all the Back to the Future parts, let us know in the comments below. I'm not totally familiar with all the time traveling equipment going on here. All right, so then we have another one of those going on top of that. That is the firewall, because remember the DeLorean is a rear engine car. So this will pop into here. Then our dashboard pops in there. Panel 4 shows the door panels going in, and these open in the typical Mercedes gullwing fashion. Of course, they swing outward, right? Okay, panel 5 shows the whole interior bucket going into our chassis, which is a flat pan. Step 6 shows our glass going in with the overhead console. There we go. Step seven is the body popping together. It says lock assembled interior here, so there are some tabs going into the back. Then we're getting our front lightning bumper gluing on here in step eight with all the little components and our headlights popping in as well. Panels nine and ten show the equipment going on top of the roof here and then painting all this in the back. Oh, maybe those... No, they're not decals. Okay. Then we have these taillights popping in and our underpan here of our lightning bumper again. And then the rear lightning bumper components going in. Then in step 11 we have the, the chillers getting the components put together and then popping into the back panel of the car for step 12. Step 13 shows more of the wires and whatnot going on to the back of the chillers. Then we have our three-piece wheels. So the backing plates, the rubber tires, and the wheels pop in. There are back wheels and front wheels, so just be sure you don't get them confused. Now we get into some of the cool bits. Oh, this is quite different from uh, my old Back to the Future model kit, because these are your wheels in the down position and they just pop right on there. So, oh, okay, and then there's our Mr. Fusion going on the top, popping in there. And then here it's showing how to mount the hover wheels. And then the whole car mounts on these pegs. So this is quite different from my old AMT model kit of the same vintage. Or not the same vintage, from the same movie, I mean, to see, say, bleh. <laughs> anyway. Here's mine from the original movie, and check this out. You had a slider, and you slide it with a little help from our friends, and there's your wheels flipping down. Marty! <laughs> okay, so that's how that worked on my old one, but of course this is quite different. So let's go back to the future, wherever we're going! And I'll get rid of the instructions here, and then we'll take a look at our plastic components. And here we have our DeLorean body, and boy, what a great 
stainless color on here from AMT, or Polar Lights, I mean to say. It looks just like the real DeLorean with all the time travel bits on it, just like from the movie. Very nicely done. I mean, it, this looks like the true brushed stainless the thing's supposed to be in. I've seen a real DeLorean at a car dealership back in the end of the 90s. Have you guys ever seen one? If so, let us know in the comments below. If you've actually seen the Back to the Future car in person, let us know in the comment section down below. But it, oh, sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself here. So as you can see, I mean, the back looks really good. It has all the correct bits and pieces for the DeLorean, as well as nice holes to pop the stuff in. Underneath, hey, guess what? No mold marks. A couple of seam lines, but I don't think they're going to interfere with much. I've got a little nick right there, of course. How rude. Anyway, I, I think the time machine bumper goes across there, but I'm not quite sure. It's got the DMC script in the grill there. And, uh, of course, I think we've got to black that out a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. The mirrors look good, too. Could use a little bare metal foil square in the back just to bring out the chrome. But overall, I would give this an A+. And now we have our chassis underpan. And actually, if you're smart enough, you could put a metal axle all the way through here and here and have the wheels down. I do believe this would be the same pan that they would have for the uh, version 1 and version 3 with the train wheels on it. I'd love a version 3, actually. The Polar Lights emblem is marked in there. And then it has all this fine print stuff. You could scrape this off with your number 16 hobby blade and some files just to get rid of it. And then paint all this flat black and everything, aluminum under here and whatnot. Just to, uh, of course, hide all the polar light stuff. As we turn this over, you can see there are some, whoops, mold marks with high bits on it. But just like I did there, you can uh, wiggle these babies off. Shouldn't really interfere with anything. There is no engine detail, so, you know. All the fun of it, of course, is in those DeLorean parts that get stuck on the back. But still, very nice detail. You know, maybe a better detail than, of course, my fold-up wheel one. Actually, it's kind of interesting. How does this compare for size? That's the same size. You know, interesting triangle bit in the middle. Kind of a completely different car under here, actually. But they had to make accommodations for the sliding mechanism on the old one. So I do believe the new one here from Polar Lights is far more accurate than the AMT kit was, but still overall very nice and it looks like it should snap together quite nicely. And here I have three separate parts trees. They were all in one bag. However, they are pretty cool. So here's our dashboard. Then we have the equipment on the roof. We've got the back panel with our flux capacitor in there, Marty. I thought of this when I fell on my bathtub and hit my head on the sink. <laughs> anyway, there's the clock. Here's the vents for these um, exhaust ports or intakes. Our lightning bumper. And then parts of the lightning bumper sides. The interior door panels. Um, I'm going to turn this over. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there's a console overhead. The steering wheel. I like how they... Um, made this. It doesn't go on the wheel, the uh, injection molding bits, our parts runner. It goes on the part that plugs in that you don't see. So that's very good on uh, Polar Light's behalf. Okay, bringing this up to the camera. Let's just move this stuff out of the way for a sec. You can see the nicely done dashboard with all the gauges and the time travel equipment and everything that goes on there and our wires and whatnot on the top. Take a look at that. That's cool. Look at that. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> there again, our flux capacitor and the little clock. And then turning this over, there's the vents at the back. And then our vent housing going on there. Here's our door panels with the nice door handles and everything. Stock DeLorean. See what I mean by the steering wheel? Mounted on there. Part you don't see and it's very good uh, good casting in there all the little bits and components 
and then our time traveling electric bumper there very nicely done so again excellent work by round number hey Do welcome back back to the future fans we've got a special treat going on here because what i just discovered is this kit is actually designed for both versions of the time machine because here is our mr fusion panel that pops in and here's the original piece that comes in with the lightning rod attachment as well so you could build this as at the beginning of Back to the Future 1, toward the end when they had to get the lightning from the 1955, and then the Mr. Fusion version. So we'll take a look at that in a sec. These are the wheels for, um, of course, the down position. These funny trumpet things are actually the stand, and these are the pins for the stands if you have it flying, and then there's our wheel backs. So let's just move these out of the way because those are not too cool. But this is, there's our Back to the Future uh, <laughs> the um, for the nuclear power. There we go, sorry. Had a little slip in the brain. And then it, there's our Mr. Fusion there, sitting up nice and tall. The little bits on the side that I don't know what they are. Then there's our big lightning rod with the hook on the end. So actually this is pretty cool because you could set it up as any one of the three that you want. Basically all the cars that were at the end of the original Back to the Future because there's the first part of the movie, then the 1955 uh, clock tower lightning rod bit, and then at the very end when Doc comes back and he's like, Marty we gotta fix your kids hole! <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, there's our fold down wheels, and then there you go, see there's the cones, and then this part these posts stick in there and then it goes underneath the car oops and then our wheel backs so they're different for the front and the back wheel so again pretty cool from polar lights and i bet a lot of people didn't realize that you could buy a couple of the back to the future mark twos and have three cars out of it next up we get our interior here with all the bits and pieces as well as our seats and these are the little hoses and things for our time equipment. Hoses and electrical wires and all kinds of goodness. So I'm not going to spend much time on those. But this is what you want to see. Right in the camera you can see all the cool little bits and details. And those pieces will snap in here for the uh, power for the, our future circuits. As well as our bucket seats. I guess they're time traveling circuits. Anyway, underneath there's a couple of mold marks, but of course you can get rid of those. You have to get your files and saws and cut off all these bits. But it should be good once we get there. And now my favorite part of all the model kits, the Chrome. And since this is a 1984 car, or 85 car, pardon me, there's not really much Chrome. We do get the cool Chrome wheels. Uh, interesting, these little uh, pegs on the parts trees, kind of like Johan back in the day with the no-touch plastic runners, <laughs> uh, which no one could figure out how to put back together after you pulled them out of the kit once. Anyway, there's our taillights. You get to paint these with your Tamiya clear acrylics, and then these are our headlight buckets. So just looking at this before we're out of time... <laughs> There's our chrome there. You can see how nice those are. If you turn them over, they're your basic snap-together type wheels with the big, long sides to catch those tires. And then, of course, our big, long pegs in there. The back looks pretty good. A couple of mold marks. I don't think they're going to be a problem. Always remember to file them down just to make them flat. So there we go. Chrome. Now we get to take a look at our glass for our DeLorean. And really, it's basically the real DeLorean glass. You just got to get rid of these in the center, and you're ready to go. This is actually like the DeLorean window. It has the little teeny bit that winds down. The rest of the glass, because of the complex curve in the roof, is basically not able to roll down. <laughs> so they put in those little windows there. So this is really accurate to that. I do believe you just paint flat black around that little ridge there for the rubber. 
But again, very nicely done by Polar Lights, and it looks like it'll be a snap to install. Next up we have our DeLorean tires, and these always remind me of the Japanese type kits. They don't have any um, names on them, like Firestone or Goodyear, but they're nice and squishy like the Japanese kits. <laughs> they do have cool uh, tire treads on here. And of course you get different tires. That's why they say to watch which ones are the fronts and the back. Because the back tires are wider than our front tires by a considerable margin. But they are really cool. Just like a Tamiya kit or Hasegawa or one of those guys. Sorry I got too close there. Come on camera, focus. You have to get back into focus. Okay, anyway. I won't mess with that. But there's our tires. And finally we have our decal sheet in all its glory with the California Out of Time license plate as well as the license plates we have today. Yeah, because this was supposed to go to 2015, remember? That was the future! Uh, anyway, there's our barcoded license plate. And then over on this side we have the sticker versions for the guys that are doing this as a straight out of the box snap kit. And not us diehards who are going to paint every piece. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I do believe we're almost out of time. So uh, let's carry on. My friend in Italy wants me to try to get the DeLorean body onto this Porsche 911 GT3 RSR. He saw it in a YouTube video and figured that since I am very knowledgeable in doing things like this, I might actually be able to get it on here. I hope I don't let him down. But anyway, I just wanted to check this out for dimensions. They're back to the future car. It almost appears like it could happen. So here we have the Carrera Porsche 125th scale race car, slot car and uh, our DeLorean here. So I'm just going to turn this over this way. And here you can see that the wheel wells will actually line up pretty perfectly with the DeLorean. The only issue is that front clip. I do believe it's longer in the Porsche and that of course is where the tongue for the slot car thing fits in. See what I mean if you look at it like this way? So, uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work. See, basically the front of this is right up to there. <clears throat> Actually, it's beyond it. So, oops, there we go. It's going to be quite an interesting little project. But at any rate, that is our review for the Back to the Future DeLorean. And that completes our review of the Back to the Future 2 DeLorean from Polar Lights. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing review and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to this channel. You'll be glad that you did because we gotta stop Biff from ruining the future. <laughs> and don't forget to check out our model kits that are available at Monster Hobbies at www.monster-hobbies.ca Great Scott, what a selection! And until next time, model builders, we'll see you in the future, or maybe the past.